everybody. I hope that he said some nice things about me, but I don't speak Italian. <laughs> so I am here to talk about the 21st century of light. Perhaps the greatest game changer of all in the 20th and 21st centuries has been the optical fiber internet, which has developed a new field which we call photonics. Photonics is the marriage of electronics and optics. I'm going to tell you about that. So let me first of all introduce you uh, to some uh, of my heroes. Because heroes are what make great disruptive changes, game changes. And here they are. We have, of course, here, Charles Towns, the inventor of the laser, which I'm using right here. But the laser drives the optical fiber internet. So when you use one of these, you think it's wireless. It is, but only to the nearest tower. After that, it's all carried on optical fibers. We have also Charles, Ta Charles Cow, Nobel Prize winner for the concept of using the optical fiber. And Vince Cerf, who was actually a speaker here uh, two years ago for the invention of the protocols that allow the internet network to work. So photonics, what is it? It's an enabling technology which is often invisible to you. It's behind many medical imaging techniques, security techniques, multi-photon imaging, oil and gas even for sensing, for safety, and for manufacturing itself. Latest ways, 3D printing of uh, metals, and of course metrology is another application. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what this might lead to. So we see here pollution monitoring, imaging, broadband gigabit cities for the future, laser biomedical techniques, all of which are driven by photonics. And in celebration of that fact, UNESCO declared 2015 to be the International Year of Light. Light celebrated not just for technology and for the global internet, but for its applications in well-being, art, buildings, architecture, and so on. So we hit on this fantastic idea that what we would do is we would write into a piece of silica the same material that we use uh, for the optical fiber internet, the Universal Declaration of the Human Rights, because it will last for one million million years, long beyond you and I will be here. And so now, uh, we are doing this for the Magna Carta, perhaps the first declaration of uh, human rights. So, let us see that the greatest optical gift to man mankind. How did it happen? This amazing optical fiber costs about the price of a piece of spaghetti. <laughs> it's the greatest waveguide with the greatest capacity of any form of communication we have ever known. And yet it costs the price of a piece of spaghetti. So, there is one problem, however, which is that you can only get through about 100 kilometers or so of optical fiber, because the light dims. So, what we needed to do is develop an all optical amplifier. And here you see it. This was a game changer. It's a simple piece of optical fiber which is doped with a material called erbium. That changed everything and enabled us now to continuously cross mountains, continents, oceans. And you see here shown is the growth in the amount of fiber that has been installed worldwide. Up to today, perhaps um, 200 million kilometers per year being installed across the world. And it would take an individual more than five million years to watch the amount of video that will cross global IP networks every month. So what are you watching? 
because it's impossible to watch that amount of video. But like most technologies, that you have to learn to be profligate. In other words, just use it. So you upload videos of your kids, of your grandmother, and so on. You want to do that. That's great. So where is all this stuff leading to? This is the next interesting question, because bridging the digital divide, accessible, affordable, global communications for education, for healthcare, throughout Africa, South America, India. So we see a combination now of the use of wireless for the last short drop to the individuals, but it's all driven by the optical fiber. So it's shown here is a surrounding optical undersea cable which powers the internet into Africa that's growing today. This is of particular satisfaction to me because I was brought up here in what is now Zambia. And I feel so proud that I have been able to contribute to providing knowledge and welfare into where I was brought up. So the phases of the global optical internet are shown here. We've introduced you to Charles Towns, Charles Cow. These guys I haven't introduced you to yet, some of the first optical fibers. And here, myself, my colleagues, and there's somebody that's not there, Professor Nakazawa from Japan also, made major contributions to the development of this optical amplifier, which has led today to the global internet growing at 100 million kilometers, 50 terahertz of capacity per fiber. What is that? It's enough for 25 million broadband channels uh, within one fiber, which is the thickness of your hair. Now, creativity is normally a linear process, as we have heard. So we start with the concept of telecommunications, we invent the laser, we do invent the fiber, then the amplifier. This allowed multiple colors to go through the same fiber. Each color can carry a signal. And so the question is, what next? Is this what we're going to have to put up with? We are running out of capacity on the individual fiber. So we put more fibers in, they only cost the price of a piece of spaghetti. Or do we reach this? A customer has sent us a complaint about our broadband service. You know, there are parts of Europe which are not doing a great job here, guys. Getting fiber to your home. Demand it. You deserve it. So, there is another piece of technology because technologists like me are presented with problems. We have to move on. We have to do the next great innovation as you use all that wonderful capacity that we have provided. And here's the latest idea. Look at this fiber with a hole in the middle. Can you use the hole, just vacuum or, or a gas in there? It's even better than glass. So why does it work? Well, there's a clever structure which you could just see here around which acts as a reflector. So watch this space. That may be the future that will allow us to take this. So what else can optical fibers do? Because the same fiber that provides you with the internet can do something else. Let me introduce you to some more heroes. Theodore Maiman, the first working laser, 1960. Eli Snitzer for the first fiber laser back in 1964. Charles Cow, we've heard about, the silica fiber. And these guys who invented the concept of the optical amplifier. And this leads us to another disruptive invention, the high-power fiber laser. And here it is. This is the concept of taking those same fibers, with the same rare earth element that's put inside there, and developing a high-power laser that is all contained in a single fiber. And you see here uh, my institute, uh, this is our logo, cut from stainless steel. And this leads to another extraordinarily revolutionary and game-changing concept. We can draw these fibers at something like 10 lasers a minute. So we can also now combine them together to an infinitely scalable 
laser system, perhaps to get up to megawatts of optical power, which will lead to things like perhaps the next accelerator for CERN could be all optical, or for energy generation. Certainly for very quick, rapid, low-cost manufacturing. There's another possibility. Removal of space junk. Perhaps in our lifetime, we will see a device launched which will be able to clean up space junk. So, let me leave you with some thoughts. This is the century, the 21st century of light. Light, we are at the beginning of this concept of photonics. Where does it lead us to? What is the next big thing? What are you going to do with the capacity? We've heard many people talking today about networks, social media, and so on. But also in cheap, low-cost manufacturing or bringing healthcare uh, through massive networks into the darker regions of the world. We have a disruptive technology, and you may well be the people who figure out how to use it in the next great incarnation of the internet. Thank you.